What's up, YouTube? It's good to see you again. It's Al here talking about plant propagation. And so today's guest is um, a blackberry plant that I picked up at Lowe's for half price. And this variety is the black satin blackberry, which was uh, picked here because I'm in uh, one of the zone sixes. I'll post that uh, somewhere here in text, I guess. I, it's either 6A or 6B, and I'm sorry. I don't remember at the moment. And one of the things I liked about this individual specimen was that it had this gigantic runner. Uh, this plant was kind of growing. It was almost like vining down and around. And uh, so of course that's leggy and overgrown and I wouldn't want um, a bush planted in my yard to, to start to grow like that necessarily. But when it comes time to propagating, it seemed like it was the perfect deal. So let's get started. I have my containers here filled with a mixture of uh, its topsoil, perlite, and vermiculite. There's actually probably a little residual sand because I had sand in there before and maybe a little bit of pine bark mulch. At different times of the year, I've just been kind of cycling through and trying to come up with my own version of a mix based on what I can find available. Uh, but that's what's here now. So when you see that, that's what the white particles are. That's the perlite. And then there are some grittier mixtures, which is either sand or vermiculite. But here we go. So uh, this plant, as you can see, is long and viney. And you can see there are these little growth nodes every few inches. And so when you see people talk about blackberry propagating, they'll usually tell you to pick like a six inch, eight inch, 10 inch cutting and to put it into a bigger pot. Um, and I have done that before and it works. But what I wanna to try today is to use these smaller cells to see if I can make more smaller plants out of the same amount of plant material. And so I'm going to give that a shot. And so here what I'm going to do is just have one node above the soil, one node below the soil is going to be my approach for today. I'm going to be using my take root rooting hormone and my Corona, uh, what do you call these? Pliers? No, uh, whatever, clippers. And let's get started. So starting out from the end of the plant, you see here I already have one growth node and I have a second node here. So I'm gonna cut it there. I'm going to strip away the growth, dip it into my rooting hormone. Standard advice is don't do it like I'm doing it and dipping it into the container. But for now, because I'm just doing this for fun and for videos, I'm gonna do that. Theoretically, there's a risk that I'm gonna transfer uh, some sort of a disease into the container or maybe I already transferred disease and now it's gonna spread. Uh, if so, I will throw out these plants and come up with better technique, but I just felt like I would uh, let you know that's what's happening and then I'm taking a not so calculated risk, but a known risk. Because this is a relatively sturdy plant, I'm able to just uh, dip it and put it right into the soil medium. Uh, all right, and so here, again, I have to go a little bit lower down now I have the, this is gonna be the top leafy section and this is gonna be the bottom section. So I'm gonna strip away the growth on the bottom section. I'm gonna dip, dip, dip. And I'm gonna plant it. So I don't think I intend to leave all of this growth, but I do wanna see, I think I'll leave as much as will uh, be allowed by the container that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, and then once I'm gonna size it, once I put it into the container with the humidity dome and we'll see what it's going to allow. Same thing here. So you can see I'm getting a little less stretch because I'm coming all the way around. Top node, bottom node, strip, dip, stick. Top node, bottom node, clip, strip, dip, stick. So there is something interesting happening here because this runner had grown down, it looks like. You can see the leaves are actually pointed down, even though that's mounted properly. 
right side up, meaning, uh, meaning this is the side that was closest to the roots. This was the side closest to the tip. The leaves are growing down because the vine was down so far, they had started to grow up. So now they're kind of planted upside down, but that'll fix. I do think I'm gonna to have to clean up these leaves because there's not gonna be room. Actually, that one's damaged. Uh, I'll leave it. It's damaged, it's probably gonna die on its own, but we'll see. I'm gonna trim those up because they're taking up too much room. And now I'm gonna go back through here and clean up some of these gigantor leaves. So you can see some of these tips are really big. And I think I'll just, I said I was gonna measure. I'm not gonna measure. Those are a little excessive compared to their neighbors. So I'm just gonna clip them. But this is what I meant when I said I was gonna measure. And you can see, I don't know if you can see those taller ones, they're still hitting on the top and it's not closing all the way down here. So I am still gonna have to cut these back. I'm gonna take off about maybe an inch, maybe a little bit more on some of the taller ones. And so originally I was planning to leave a lot of stem, figuring that there's probably nutrients in these stems that the plant could reabsorb. That was the theory at least, but it was not practical. So now we see we're gonna get a nice good fit. There's a little bit of room above those branches for the air. I don't know if it circulates in there, but at least there's room to breathe and we're not in contact with the container. So that's that. But there's one last step and this is a step that uh, everybody talks about and I wanted to let you know, I was screwing it up a lot in the beginning. Everybody talks about watering in your cuttings. And I do think that that's important. And so two things, the uh, soil, the dirt, the stuff that I'm putting the clippings in, it is already moist. Uh, I didn't do anything special about that. It's just, it's been outside in the rain and what happens is it drains through the same way that it would. So, but already when I scoop it, it's a little bit wet already. So it's not bone dry. I wonder where bone dry comes from. That's a weird expression, isn't it? Like how many times are you feeling bones? You're like, oh, oh, those bones are dry weird all right uh but the thing is uh it's already moist before i put them in and then if i was to water it in this container here this is just like a it's a bucket and it retains the water and what i found is that i was rotting out some of my first round of cuttings because the soil wasn't draining right because i was still figuring out my mix uh and i was being cheap on the products like the perlite and uh and it was just sitting in water and when it was sitting in water sure that was adding to the humidity but but to be honest, what I was finding is like, you could touch the soil and water would like squish out if I squeezed it. That was way too wet. I'm just gonna take it over to a, a different part of my deck. I'm gonna water it out where it's able to drain freely. There are holes in the bottom of this and I'm just gonna wet it and drain it out in the open air. And then when I'm all done today and I start to clean up, that's when I'm gonna take this thing back in. I'm gonna put it in the container and then put the dome on top. So I'm gonna water it thoroughly, but I'm gonna allow it to drain out in the open air for just a, a, a while, I don't know, hour or two while I'm making videos and making big plants into little plants like I do here. And, uh, and then I'm gonna put it back in. And so watch out for that when you start. Uh, it is important to water, but there's a point where you can overwater. And even if you're rinsing it thoroughly, like everybody's showing you on the video, if it's not draining all the way out, both in the containers and then in the container that it's sitting in, then you might get some rot. And that is the part that's gonna be the hardest to convey to you here uh, because I haven't perfected it yet, but it does seem to be a feel. It needs to be wet, but not too wet, which isn't so helpful, but be ready for that kind of uh, dynamic to experiment with. So that's all for now. Let's move on to everybody's favorite part. Let's take a look at the leaf carnage. Is this your favorite part? Nobody's actually told me that this is your favorite part. If it is, leave a comment below. If it's not, leave a comment below. Hit those buttons, that little bell thing, the thumbs up thing, uh, any of those buttons that are there. Uh, YouTube likes you to click buttons. So click buttons and then that says you like me and I want you to like me. That's why I'm doing this. All right, what we do is we take a look at the carnage. So some of this carnage is not from these plants. This is from the plant that's right back there. 
This is from the plant, it's right above my head. But the green leaves there are the blackberry carnage. And what we're gonna do is sweep those. What do we do with them? Boom! Right into the compost bucket. That's all. Hope you had fun. See you in a bit.